Hello everybody, the Air Aid Lord is back. Um, this is kind of an unexpected video. Um, basically, this is, as every gamer knows, this is the week of E3, the biggest gaming event ever. <laughs> um, obviously, I can't go to it because it's on the other side of the freaking country and it's expensive and all that nonsense. So, um, I actually watched it on G4. I think I mentioned in a previous video. I watched it on G4TV.com and I also watched it on TV on X-Play and G4. So, uh, two, it was either yesterday or two days ago, um, the press conferences started for Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo. So Microsoft went first, then Sony, and then Nintendo just had their press conference today. Um, the only press conference I've looked at, like, in full detail, like, watched from start to finish, was Microsoft. And that's obvious because the Xbox 360 is my main system. It's really the only system that I use. I do have a Wii, but it grows freaking mold and dust in my basement. I never use it. I haven't gotten a game for it in years. It's a worthless piece of crap, in my opinion, but we'll get to that later. Um, right now, I want to talk about some of the things that went on at E3 concerning Microsoft and the Xbox 360. And yes, before I start this video, I know that a hundred people are probably doing things similar to this. There are people who are giving their reactions, people who are posting gameplay videos of Modern Warfare 3. There are people who are talking about it and giving their opinions. So, I know I'm one in a million doing this right now, but again, these are just my opinions, my thoughts, you know, things that I thought were good, bad, sucked, or lame, whatever, about E3 concerning Microsoft and their press conference first. Okay? So, let's go from start to finish. Now, one thing that impressed me about Microsoft especially was the fact that they started their press conference really strong and they ended it really strong and that was a key factor for them because basically the gameplay that they showed from start and then the gameplay they showed at the end really nailed their slot, I don't know, as the top E3 contender or who, who made the best pre press conference I guess you could say. So they started out, obviously a representative from Microsoft came and said a whole bunch of stuff, oh, this is great about the 360, we're so strong, yada, 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 all that stuff. Then, they had Robert, or what the hell is his name, Robert something from Infinity Ward come up and he basically played a level from Modern Warfare 3. And Modern Warfare 3, from my, my impressions of the game, now that they've actually released a gameplay, it's, you know, I was kind of disappointed, I'm impressed and disappointed at the same time, and here's why. With Modern Warfare 3, the game looks, looking at the gameplay, they sh what they showed was basically a level from, you're like a Navy SEAL ranger, and you're in New York City, you're under the water, you, you're using the scuba diving gear, you're, you have to plant a mine on a Russian submarine, you surface, and you're driving through a whole bunch of destroyed ships in the New York Harbor. It's a cool scenery, but the thing is, the gameplay looks almost identical to Modern Warfare 2. If you compare the gameplay that they showed at E3 to a Modern Warfare 2 video, it almost looks exactly the same. You know, you still have the wristwatch, the guns look the same, the reloading, the triggers, the weapons, almost everything looks exactly the same. It was kind of disappointing. Now, those are just brief impressions. Don't get me wrong. I'm sure Modern Warfare 3 is going to be good, but... I just think that it looks way too freaking similar to Modern Warfare 2. I mean, I really was hoping that they would make a leap forward in the Call of Duty series, especially since the Call of Duty series is really losing its steam. You know, people kind of got pissed off with Modern Warfare 2 because the campaign wasn't as... You know, the campaign was good of Modern Warfare 2, but it wasn't as smashing as uh, the first Modern Warfare was. And because of all the hacking and glitches and all that nonsense that went on in Modern Warfare 2, people kind of lost trust in the Call of Duty series. And I think I speak for everyone when I say that most people who are going to be playing Modern Warfare 3 were really looking for a solid, 
experience. We want something new with multiplayer, something that's not going to be stupid and abusive, something new. We want good campaign moments. We want, you know, just ground, all that cool, cool stuff that we got in the first on Modern Warfare. And, you know, it's kind of hard since they're working off of the nonsense story of the second one with Russia invading and stuff, because the first Modern Warfare was kind of realistic, and I like that, but the second one wasn't really, really realistic, but... Let's not go too much into that. So after Modern Warfare 3, they, they said, you know, in, that Infinity Ward, Sledgehammer, they were making the game together and all that nonsense. So they just told us what we know. After Modern Warfare 3, they went into Tomb Raider, and I've never really played a Tomb Raider game, just to give you guys a history of that. I've never, ever played a Tomb Raider game, even when it was originally released for the PS2, I think. I don't really remember, but... Yeah, they showed some HD Tomb, Ra uh, Tomb Raider, I don't know, maybe the original story of the girl. You know, she's, like, trying to pull something out of her fucking body, like, soap, trying to pull the knife out of him when Shepard stabs him or some shit like that. So, it looked pretty cool. I'll give it a shot since I'm going to be playing the major releases. Then after Tomb Raider, they went on to talk about Mass Effect 3. Now, all right. Mass Effect, I've never really talked about the Mass Effect series. Mass Effect, I don't really like. And I know that's kind of surprising, but I've never really been into RPGs. The only RPG that really, like, got me interested in the RPG series was Fallout. Fallout 3 I played in 2008. I was addicted to that game for so long. Then Fallout New Vegas came out, and I played that. I did play Oblivion 4, but Oblivion 4 was... I didn't really understand it, and I had my, like, if you look at my achievements for Oblivion 4, you know, they were kind of staggering, and my friend, uh, my friend Top Dog kind of showed me the odds and ends of Oblivion 4, so I understood it a little bit better, but, ma but, you know, as far as Mass Effect goes, I played Mass Effect 1, like, the beginning of Mass Effect 1, and to be honest, it really didn't hit home with me. Like, I did, I could not for the life of me understand how people liked Mass Effect. Like, I just personally didn't like the game. It didn't make sense. You know, and it's funny because I love science fiction. I wrote a science fiction novel, and yet I still don't like the science fiction aspect with Mass Effect and all that nonsense. It just, it just doesn't appeal to me. I don't know what people see in it, but that's my personal opinion. I've never played Mass Effect 2. Like I just said, I did play the beginning of Mass Effect 1. I sold it, though. I don't have it anymore, so... That's that. And so, yeah, Mass Effect 3 will be coming out. They didn't really say much about it, but they did say that it would be released in March, as you can see on the camera to the right. And that's what that's that for Mass Effect. And then after that, they, they uh, released some information on... A new Tom Clancy game, I guess it's called Ghost Recon Future Soldier, some shit like that. And this was one of the only games that I saw, like shooter games, that really utilized the Kinect. And it really, like, basically the representative, he used his hands in a weird motion. I know I can't show you because I'm obviously looking at my TV and I don't want to show myself on camera because I don't do that, but... Basically, he almost, like, he pulled his hand back. I mean, you can obviously see the footage online, but the way he was doing it, it was a very odd motion for moving a gun and, like, shooting and stuff. Like, he kind of, like, opened his hand and closed it to, like, shoot. And he used voice commands to tell the game to change his weapon loadout. So, it's interesting, I have to say. You know, it's interesting. All of this stuff is interesting. Like, it was interesting last year with the motion controls that Sony and Microsoft offered. But the problem was last year is that that's the, that's was all that they talked about. They all they talked about last year in E3 2010 was the motion controls. Motion control this, motion control that. We don't care about motion controls, all right? We want the games. The games is what is going to sell your system, especially Sony. The only way Sony's going to beat Microsoft is if they get exclusive games. The exclusive games that put them at the top of the level. Back in, I don't know, what, 2002, 3, 4, 5, 6, when they originally had the PlayStation 2. PlayStation 2 dominated the market because it had what? What did it have? It had good exclusives. That's why it sold well. And, you know, it had some good kid games and it appealed to a, you know, broad audience. So, 
I don't know, it looked interesting, you know, Ghost Recon, the Tom Clancy games, and then they went further and they said, oh, every single Tom Clancy game is going to have motion controls in it. It's going to have the Kinect and you're going to be able to move your hand and crouch and open your hands and be able to shoot targets. I'm like, yeah, that's great, but honestly, I don't want my controller going away. I don't want shooters evolving into this nonsense where we have to stand up and kick and sh pretend to shoot. I mean, that's stupid. I mean, I want to come home, take the controller, and just run around and play a game. Because, think about it, what if someone has like a medical history of, you know, like they have a lower, like herniated disc like Phil has, or something like that. What if they have, uh, what if they're handicapped? I mean, what happens then? Can you not play these types of games? Like, I, I don't know. That's what Microsoft and Sony, they're, that's what they're both trying to do with their motion controls. They're still trying to do it. They're still trying to release games. And that brings me into my next topic, which is what Microsoft's going to be doing as far as Xbox Live and Kinect goes. And they, they announced that they're going to have... Microsoft TV, which is this, uh, apparently it's this revolutionary way of viewing shows on your Xbox and watching movies on your Xbox and playing games and using voice identification and scrolling your hand across the screen. It's all that fancy dancy gobbly gush that we're going to get with the Kinect. Well, we already have it with the Kinect, but I don't have a Kinect. It's a waste of money. It's like a hundred some odd dollars. Why would I get a, uh, why would I get a Kinect? There are like four games for it. There's like Dance Central, Connectables, there are some like bowling games, sports nonsense, but there's nothing that appeals to me. Like, why would I get it? I, I mean, the only reason I could possibly think of getting a Connect is so that I can try out the voice features and the scrolling features. That actually seems cool because it's revolutionary technology, but it's not worth $100 or $150, whatever it's selling for. So yeah, Microsoft, they're introducing a way of streaming t you know, television on your Xbox. And then they said you can get YouTube videos on your Xbox and you can stream popular YouTube channels from your Xbox. So right now, you know, if I had this feature with the Kinect and the TV and all that nonsense you have to sign up for, I could basically go on my YouTube channel from my Xbox and you would see my YouTube channel from my Xbox right here. So, you know, I, I don't know. I, it's cool, but it's not pushing anything. It's not giving people a reason to buy the console. And I want to keep stressing that because that's what these game developers have to do. They have to find a way to sell their console to the maximum number of people particularly because the competition is getting so, so serious now. I mean, it was always serious, but it's getting really, really tough. Sony's coming out with lots of exclusives. Xbox trying to counter that. Nintendo, I don't know what the fuck Nintendo's doing. I'm going to get into their press, press conference later, but I saw, a little bit of a, uh, I saw a little bit of it today, and it was kind of weird. I'm not going to go into it, but whatever. Alright, so continuing with Microsoft, after they announced the TV thing, they went in to talk about Gears of War 3, which is obviously a major blockbuster, which is going to be coming out this fall. Um, for all of you who watch my channel, I did try the, 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 what is it, what the fuck's it called, the beta, that, that's, what, that's what it's called, they don't call it a... Uh, DLCs anymore, they call it that. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I played that, and I got an impression of how Gears of War works. Now, I've already expressed my history with Gears of War, I'm not really a big fan of the series, but that could change. You know, there's always a chance that I get more involved in the Gears of War series because, because of, you know, Gears of War 3, I play it online, whatever. So, yeah, Cliff Blit... Cliff Blin... I don't even know how to pronounce his last, last name. It's like Cliff Bl Blazinski or something. I don't even know how the fuck to pronounce his name. But he's from Epic Games. He came out, he was talking about Gears of War and how it's going to be a big selling point. There's Horde mode, there's a whole bunch of different features. So I didn't really pay much attention to it since I'm not really into Gears of War. But it did look interesting. I'll definitely be, be trying that out. 
And then they talked about Halo a little bit. They talked about the anniversary edition of Halo Combat Evolved, which came out in 2001. It'll be the 10-year anniversary on... What is it? I don't know. When the hell did Halo 1 come out? Sometime in September. September or something. 15th, maybe? I don't know. But they are going to be having the Halo Anniversary Edition. And then after that, they talked about... Alright. After this, they talked about the one thing that kind of puzzled me. They talked about Minecraft. Minecraft coming to the Xbox 360. I can't remember if they said that it was going to be going to the PS3, but they did, they did say that it would be going to the 360. Here's my problem with this. Minecraft is this sandbox creative game that was on the uh, computer for a while. I don't know when it started getting pop uh, when it started gaining popularity. But recently a lot of people have been talking about it how it's really popular amongst people. Like people go on and they can use bricks and like do all this nonsense like I've watched some people play it. Like, there are some people in my town who are, like, wicked nerdy, and they play these stupid Minecraft games. I even have a friend. Well, I don't even know if I should call him my friend. He's a dumbass, but... <laughs> yeah, he's somebody I know, but he has a channel dedicated to making Minecraft videos and tutorials, and, yeah, I guess... And he's doing well, actually. His channel's doing well because a lot of people like that footage. You know, there are a lot of nerds out there. I shouldn't call them nerds, but people who like Minecraft, who have an interest in making their levels and stuff. But it's really going to, I think, you know, having Minecraft on the 360, like, I don't know if I would buy Minecraft. Like, is there a story to it? Is there a multiplayer to it? Like, what is the, I never understood the point of Minecraft. Like, what do you do in Minecraft? Do you just build shit all day? Do you fucking make a tower of shit? Like, what do you do? Like, I don't understand the point of Minecraft. It, it baffles me. It completely baffles me what Minecraft's point is. I'm sure some people will come on and say, Oh, in Minecraft you have to do this. I'm sure I'm going to get a couple comments like that. But it's fine. I don't really know much about Minecraft. It's hard for me to judge. I do know that it's this sandbox game where you can make a lot of creative stuff. There's There are these minor enemies and stuff like that, so... All right, that, that's basically it for Microsoft's conference. Oh, one more thing. You, you know how I said at the beginning of this video that Microsoft opened and ended their conference with a bang? Yeah. Basically, I wasn't expecting this. I was completely blown away. But basically, at the end of the conference, they announced, they announced basically Halo 4. Yeah, they announced Halo 4. Four. One. Well, I don't know how many fucking fingers I put up in front of the camera. Whatever. Anyways, you get the point. They announced Halo 4, and the creative director at Microsoft said it was part of a new trilogy. So what does that mean? Does that mean we're going to get Halos 4, 5, and 6? Ugh, I don't know. But they did. They released a teaser trailer, and it's, it's directly from the end of Halo 3, where Master Chief is frozen in the, the little capsule cell with Cortana just watching them go to sleep, and they're in the amber clad, and they're above that planet, and all that, now all that stuff. Obviously, everybody knows, well, at least some people do know that I'm a very big fan of the Halo series, probably since Halo 2 came out, because that was when I was on the fence about buying a PS3, and my friends convinced me to get Halo 2, and then I'm like, oh, I have to get Halo 3, and I played it a lot, so that's just a brief history of my Halo career, I should say, but it's interesting. I mean, they said that Halo, that uh, Halo 4 would be coming out holiday 2012, and it's not being made by the original Halo creators. It's being made by 343 Studios, which is like a branch of the original Halo studio. So, I don't know. I trust them to make a good Halo game, but... They have to, if it's going to be a new trilogy, they have to, again, put something innovative. It's just like Modern Warfare 3. They have to put something that's going to, first of all, sell the game, because they need to obviously make money. And they also need to put something in the game that's going to really attract attention 
and make us want to play the game. Something new, something that's cool, something that expands the series, something that puts us in a new perspective and that attracts the maximum number of people. Because if you can make people happy and do that, you're really set. You know, from a marketing standpoint, that's what these companies need to do. They need to stop focusing on the stupid motion controls and they need to get back to what sold their, their consoles in the first place. The games. Okay? I don't care about TV on your Xbox. I have a freaking cable box. I'll use a remote control with a cable box any other day. All right? I don't care about YouTube on my Xbox. I have a laptop right here and a computer. I can easily go right now and go to any YouTube channel I want with ease without having to say, Xbox. Fine, Dark Side Phil. Ooh, this is an error? Well, screw you. <laughs> really. It's like, I don't want to have to go through that. Just let me, you know, use my specific technology with my specific technology, okay? Computer was meant for browsing the internet and all that stuff. Xbox is meant for games, okay? It's never going to be anything more, in my opinion, okay? All right, so that's it. Uh, overall, I think Microsoft did a good job. They did focus on the games a lot more than they did in 2010. In 2010, as I mentioned, it was all about the stupid motion controls. And, you know, I'm happy that they're taking a larger step in the right direction as far as games go. I was very impressed with the lineup that we have. You know, Modern Warfare 3, Oblivion 5, Tomb Raider, Mass Effect. I'll, I'll still try Mass Effect even though I don't like the series. You know, Gears of War 3, Assassin's Creed Revelations, which they didn't show any footage of. I think they showed footage of it in a Sony's pre press conference to kind of even the, even the playing field since they had the 360 show Modern Warfare 3 footage. They had, you know, PlayStation show Assassin's Creed footage, so. Yeah, so overall, pretty good. You know, I'm kind of disappointed. The one thing I didn't like about the press conference, again, with the whole TV stuff and the commercials where it's going to revolutionize, like, I hate that. I Again, as I voiced a hundred times, I want them to focus on the average consumer, the common gamer, some of their hardcore gamers, and keep getting, giving us these expansive multiplayer experiences, good single-player experiences, and... Great games to play overall. So that's the point. That should be the point for every press conference. Maybe not Nintendo, since they're kind of like out in oblivion right now doing their own fucking thing. So yeah. Alright. Um, when we come back, um, I will talk a little bit about Sony. It was easier for me to talk about Microsoft, because I've had a 360 for about five years now. And I did have a PS2 for a long time, but obviously it's been a while since I've touched upon... Sony and their products, so I will give my opinion of it, though, so, alright, um, stay tuned, and again, probably either, I think today's the release of Red Faction Armageddon, so actually I think I should go out and get that, maybe now, <laughs> if I have time, so, so stay tuned for the last two press conferences, Sony and Nintendo, and more LA Noir and Red Faction, all the Gaining stuff from Satan's asshole. <laughs>